to me, the most satisfying way to win a game of nine ball is to break and run. A not so distant second, getting an early nine ball. A much distant third is the nine on the break. So let's look at this. We have the one on the side, the two in the corner, the three in the side, the four in the side, the five in the corner, the six. Everything is laid out for us. We are a favorite to run out from here. If you're a high intermediate to advanced player, you're done. You're, you're going to run out from here. But what happens if I give you this? Now, I don't care who you are, you're not a favorite to run out from here. The reason is, even though we can get on this four in a way to break up the cluster, we can even get on the three in a way to break up the cluster. In fact, we can get on the two right here, come off of two rails and break up the cluster. But we don't want to do that for two reasons. Number one, we're going to probably come in from this angle, which might snooker us behind the seven ball. Number two, we have a wired nine ball. The eight nine is automatic. All we have to do is make contact with it on this side of the eight ball and the nine is going to go. So what we look for when you have these situations that have presented themselves, you looked around the table, you said, wait a second, look at this. Look for the balls that are connected to that, the balls that are closest to that. Right now, it's the five ball. And here's the great news. The five, if I can get here, which is a pretty tight zone, I can play the five, eight, nine combination, forget about it, I'm done, I'm out. Or I can get here in this zone, shoot a little draw shot or even a tangent line shot, run into that eight ball with a billiard and we're out. I can even get here and shoot a bank shot into the eight, nine and we're gonna be out. So the cluster is no longer an issue. Running eight or nine balls is no longer an issue. I only need to run five. So look for these opportunities and shoot at them when they present themselves if you know that you either have to break up this cluster at high risk or play a safety. I play safeties just like everybody else does, but I don't like people coming back to the table because people get lucky and I don't want them at the table at all. So let's look at what we could do here, knowing that that eight and nine is wire and that we want to use the five ball to get on it. We can shoot right here to get on the three. I'm just going to draw this back a little tiny bit to get on the two ball. I want to be on this side of the two so that I can go that way to get on the three. Actually, we didn't get on this side of the two, so we'll shoot this with high left, come down here to get on the three ball. Now we're on the three. By the way, guys, get yourselves off the rail. You don't want to be too close. This is actually a little too close. But I like this situation because I'm going to play the four in the side and that is going to get me on the five just about any way I want. So let's play a little just running ball here, just enough to get us off the rail so we have control over the cue ball and we're pretty straight on the four. And now I have my choice. Do I want to try to get in this zone to play the combination that way? Do I want to bank it and play into the combination that way? Or maybe I come back a little bit and play a billiard off of the five and into the eight, nine combination. For those of you that don't know the term billiard, let me explain what a billiard is versus a carom. A billiard, the eight ball is the cue ball is doing all of the work. So if I send the four into the six to make the four in that corner, that's a carom. If I send the cue ball into the five to hit the eight, so the cue ball is coming off the five and hitting the eight, that is a billiard. Now we have gotten lazy as pool players over the last few years and people will use the word carom when they're talking about a billiard because they don't know the difference. But that's the difference. So we're shooting to set up a billiard so that we can play the five in the corner and get on the eight nine. Well, make the eight nine combination. So I'm going to draw this back just a tiny, tiny bit 
If you don't have a three inch draw shot, guys, I know some of you have a 33 inch draw shot, don't have a three inch draw shot, you better get one, okay? <laughs> because that three inches made all the difference in the world here. I'm going to stun off of this three, the uh, five ball. I will put a ton of right hand spin on it in case I fall short of the eight, I have an opportunity to spin into that ball. This is low right. We get our early nine. That's very satisfying. Let's look at a couple other shots. Most of the times that we make an early nine, most of the times, it's going to be because the nine is sitting in the pocket. If you have a situation like this and you see the nine is sitting in the pocket or the 10 ball, start looking for ways to make this ball. Now we're on the one, we have the eight six tied up over here. That's going to keep us from running out unless we break up that combination and well that cluster. And we talked about the dangers of breaking up clusters, but let's look at another thing we might do here. The nine in the pocket, like I said, creates a lot of opportunities. And frankly, if the cue ball was here, I'd bank that one ball down here to play the nine. But my cue ball is here. The two is here, not quite in the pocket, but close enough to the nine that we can start thinking about using it to get out here. So what are we going to do? Let's shoot a draw shot down table and give ourselves the first opportunity to make that nine ball. So that would look like this. We come down, decent draw shot, but we didn't quite pull it off. But now we have our opportunity here to play the two. You are going to be against opponents who have a better skill set than you, but you can beat them if you're playing chess when they're playing checkers. Not always, but very often. If you have a situation like this, you took the first shot at the nine, and now you left yourself in position to bank the two into the nine to win, you get enough of these opportunities, you can offset some of the skill differences that you will find against other players. I play some games against guys that can do some ridiculous things with a cue ball, but they can't do ridiculous things with their mind. So use your creativity, use your intelligence, and solve some of these problems by identifying them on the table. Let's bank the two into the nine and take the money. And it's a wrap. This is where I remind you that you will never see this exact configuration, but knowing about what I'm about to show you will help you if a similar situation comes up. So here we are. The four does not pass the nine, eight, and it doesn't pass the seven. So a couple of things we know. We're either going to have to bank that four ball to get out from here, which means banking it and also getting on the five. We're going to have to break up the cluster if we want to run out, or we have to make an early nine. So since the theme of the video is making early nines, let's look how we can do this. We can shoot a little stop shot here on the one, giving ourselves this angle for two rails off the two ball. So we come in this way and break up the nine eight cluster. But while we do it, we hit it soft enough that we leave the nine along the rail. Now, why would we do that? Because then we could play the four nine combo and win the game. If we hit it too hard, we can get it off the rail and maybe run out, but there's a couple bad things that are happening. The tangent line from the eight and nine, if I come in this way, it's gonna put the nine on the short rail. The eight might end up clustered up with the five. There's a lot of unpredictable things that are going on here. But one thing I know for sure, if I hit it soft enough, the nine is still gonna be on the rail. That, I don't need any um, Ouija board to figure out. So let's look at this. We shoot a stop shot. We're coming off of two rails with the intent of coming into this diamond here and hopefully hitting the nine from this direction. If we hit it this way or we hit the eight first, we're still gonna be okay because we still have our three ball there. But let's take a look at this. High right hand spin. 
that running English gets us around the table. Look how slow I hit that, by the way. Look at this. So just as predicted, our nine ball is on the rail here. All we need to do is get on the four in a way that we can make it. So I'm gonna crank up a bit here and get a line on the four so that we can play a four nine combo. So that would look like this. Now, because of that stun shot, we can play the four into the nine, call the nine ball here. That's a good way to run out. And you know what? It's going to look lucky. So if you're playing for money, that's a great situation. If, if you win a game like this, they'll be talking about you for years. And I know because they're still talking about me. Here's the situation. The eight is blocking the nine. We can't even get in this pocket with the eight. Even if we had a combination, we couldn't get in this pocket with the eight ball blocking it because the nine is not going to follow it into the pocket. But if we can take care of this situation first, leaving the nine ball in the pocket in the meantime, we have some other opportunities to get ourselves there, but we have to do it soon, which means we have to do it off the four ball because the five is not going to help us make the nine in this corner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the two in the side pocket. We're gonna roll it just a little bit because we want to have this angle that allows us to shoot a draw shot putting that eight ball in the pocket for us. So look what happened. I don't know about you, but I like this situation. We hit it soft enough that we left the nine in the pocket. Remember that when the nine has a ball in front of it, hit it soft enough that you leave it in the pocket. And now we get to bank the four ball back here to play the nine. Looks like this. High left hand spin give us an angle over here. We can even come off the rail first. We're gonna make that nine. And it's a wrap. So here's an interesting situation. We're on the two, the nine is sitting in the pocket, the three is clustered up. We don't really have an easy shot on the two nine. Now I think I can shoot a draw shot here to get on the nine in the corner. Let's see what it looks like. So I can roll it over and get on that nine and win the game. So that is a possibility. What if I have an angle that makes that pretty much impossible? What I can do is play my cue ball around the table and send it towards the nine. I can also not only do that, but bring the two ball back here off of this rail and send that towards the nine. Either one wins the game for me if I reach the nine. If I don't take a shot at it, I have to play some kind of safety knowing that these balls are clustered up anyway. And even if I get the ball back, ball in hand might not allow me to run out either. So let's see what we do. If we get crazy aggressive, bank the two back here off this rail and send it towards the nine and send the cue ball around, towards the nine as well. We have a shot that looks like this. Cue ball into the nine. 
Oh, are we on the air?